Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So, welcome to our biology class. And in this class, we are just going to do our part three. Our part three on carbohydrates. So, this part three will mark the end of the topic carbohydrates. And I hope you guys submitted the first assignment I gave you on carbohydrates because tonight i'll also send another assignment for you guys to do and that will be the final assignment on carbohydrate so after this topic my next topic will be proteins and i hope you guys will still be around and make sure that you revise through carbohydrate before we go to proteins so before i start our class can someone kindly confirm if you guys are able to get me or not everything's just okay sir all right thank you very much okay all right thank you very much so ladies and gentlemen in the previous class we talked about disaccharide where we had to discuss um examples like maltose we also looked at an example of lactose which is normally found in milk and also talked about sucrose which is another disaccharide that you need to make sure that you know and i made an emphasis on making sure that you know the type of bond which is there so we know it is a glycosidic bond but you should also make sure that you know specifically what type of glycosidic bond it is so in today's class i have a simple task to explain the final part which is polysaccharide so we have different classes or groups of saccharides or sugars or carbohydrates so basically we looked at the four groups which is the monosaccharide disaccharide oligosaccharide and lastly the polysaccharide so the polysaccharide will be my last part on carbohydrate so when you talk of polysaccharide we can just simply look at the animation there you can see one molecule sugar is being added to another um, molecule sugar until they become big so when you talk of polysaccharide we are simply talking about a big unit of small monomers called monosaccharides so polysaccharides are just polymerized products of many monosaccharide units so you need to understand that these monosaccharides glucose fractose galactose manos and many many other examples of uh, monosaccharides they do come together they do make those glycosidic bonds to to produce a large chain of product and this large chain of product is what we are simply calling the polysaccharide so like you can see from the animation it is a big large unit chain which is having these small monomers which are called um, monosaccharides so normally polysaccharides are classified into two groups take note of that um polysaccharides are classified into two groups you have homo homo polysaccharide and also heterosaccharide so we have two classes of polysaccharide these are heterosaccharide and homosaccharide if you hear the word homo that simply means that we are talking about the same type of monosaccharide the same type of unit the, if it is glucose it has to be glucose throughout if it is um, fructose it has to be fructose throughout so those are homosaccharide homo polysaccharide then heterosaccharide these are rare and these are not commonly seen and these guys they have different types of um, different types of 
monosaccharides that have connected together. The other thing that you need to understand is that one of the characteristics of polysaccharide is that they are insoluble in water. Let's quickly look at um, just a millimeal. When you get millimeal, it doesn't dissolve in water. Why? That is starch. Okay? And starch is a what? Is a polysaccharide. When you look at potatoes, no matter how many times you might boil it, it will not dissolve in that water. Okay? But it might look thick. It might look as if it has dissolved, but it hasn't dissolved. Instead, it will just maybe um, it will just maybe become into small pieces and look thick like. So that's another characteristics of um, polysaccharide. Unlike monosaccharide, which are able to dissolve in water, even some disaccharides like sucrose, which are able to dissolve in water. But when you talk of polysaccharide, these do not dissolve in water they are insoluble so we have different types of polysaccharides which can be digested and they can be absorbed in our body examples of these you can talk about starch which is easily broken down into small pieces until it is now being absorbed and some of these polysaccharides cannot be digested by human being for example you can talk about cellulose which is playing a role in structural support so when you talk of cellulose it is not digestible by a human being instead they can be digested and broken down into small particles by termites and other insects so one of the characteristics of polysaccharide is that these polysaccharide some are eatable they can provide energy to human being like glycogen if you look at glycogen that is animal starch okay we have plants and the animals plants have starch if you look at a uh, millimeal millimeal it is from plants it is starch it doesn't have glycogen but in human beings for the energy that i'm possessing it's because of the glycogen which i'm having so we'll look in detail about what is this starch and basically we'll find out that starch is in two types starch is in two types we have amylose and amylopectin we have amylose and amylopectin the difference will also be discussed later on then we'll also go in detail and look at the animal starch which is known as glycogen so we'll go much in detail later on so we let's quickly look at homo polysaccharides let's quickly look at homo polysaccharide i think we can see the the potato on the left hand side and you can see starch there being formed until you have what we are having bread which has some content of starch i think we can see all that now why am i using starch so starch is an example of a homo polysaccharide starch is an example of a homo polysaccharide now what is this homo polysaccharide so a homo polysaccharide they have only one type of monosaccharide unit if i talk about starch it only has glucose nothing else just glucose because starch is coming from maltose so starch only has what only has glucose nothing else just glucose as a result starch is an example of a homo polysaccharides so let's quickly move on 
and uh, look at this same um, starch we have talked about starch but we need to understand in detail what is this starch what is it made up of okay those are the areas of interest that you need to make sure that you understand in biology you need to question yourself what is this what it is it made up of is it classified into other types what is the use what is the type of bond does it have so such will help you to analyze biological questions so let's quickly look at starch we understand what it is what it is made up of and some important facts about it that you need to take note of so the first thing that you need to understand is that starch is a mixture of two substances get me right starch is a mixture of two substances remember i said starch can be branched into amylops and amylopectin amylos and amylopectin so the two substances that are making starch to be starch are amylos and amylopectin in short starch is a mixture of two substances and these two substances are amylos and amylopectin so amylose is the first one and this is essentially a linear polysaccharide this is essentially a linear polysaccharide and starch is the major form of stored carbohydrate in plants in animals we have glycogen the reason why i have much energy to even talk to you to even teach you it's because i have glycogen which is providing energy for me okay now for plants it is not glycogen instead it is what it is starch so starch is the major energy storage for plants then we have another type or substance that makes up a uh, starch and this is amylopectin so one difference between amylopectin and amylos is that amylopectin is branched take note of that amylopectin is branched whereas amylos is linear it is not branched amylopectin is branched but amylos is what is not branched that's why amylopectin is somehow related to glycogen just that for amylopectin it is also more branched so with that in mind we need to understand that both of them they have a type of bond which is alpha d glycosidic bond why do they have alpha d glycosidic bond it's because they contain the unit which are the alpha d glucose so alpha d glucose is the monomer this is the what a monomer or the mono saccharide so the monosaccharide which is found in starch whether amylose or amylopectin is what is alpha d glucose remember we have uh, stereoisomers glucose has stereoisomers so these stereoisomers can either be l or d okay can either be d glucose or l glucose depending on the rotation 
that they take when polarized light passes through them and this is due to the presence of the chiral carbon like we discussed in part 2 of carbohydrates so both amylose and amylopectin they have a type of glucose which is alpha glucose alpha d glucose now naturally starch contain 10 to 20 percent of amylose and 80 to 90 percent of amylopectin this simply means that amylopectin is more abundant as compared to amylose amylopectin is more abundant as compared to amylo amylose now on this part i have mentioned only four important facts one the classes of starch amylose amylopectin two the the type of glucose they have how far the glucose three the amount of amylose and amylopectin which are found amylose it is 10 to 20 percent amylopectin it is 80 to 90 percent then the last one is the difference between amylose and amylopectin which is amylose amylopectin is more abundant as compared to amylose okay so i think these other stuffs you just simply go through them at your own time those are just some of the facts that you guys are supposed to take note of so so far do we have any questions before i move on do we have any questions please feel free to ask you can ask from anywhere any question Florence do you have a question no question sir okay Frederick any question no I don't have the questions okay uh, I can hear someone with a hand Charles yes Charles what's your question Charles yes sir what you say that uh, the reason why amyros okay um when you talk of alpha d glucose um basically there i was just talking about the the stereoisomerization of glucose which i explained in in part two of this class on carbohydrates so what i was saying is that the type of glucose which is found in in starch in both amylopectin and amylose is alpha d glucose so you need to be careful because we have two major types of stereoisomers of glucose we have the l glucose and the d glucose so if you put l glucose as the one which is found in starch then you are wrong because these isomers depend on the presence of the what of the chiral carbon and this chiral carbon it's just a carbon which is attached to four different groups so once polarized light once polarized light passes through the 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 glucose when it is a d glucose then it will turn to the right when it is l glucose it will turn to the left 
So that's just a point I was trying to to emphasize on. Okay, so let's move on and quickly look at the structures. So that's the first structure of amylose. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the structure of amylose. Make sure that you are able to you are able to to draw and you are able to identify. The other one is amylopectin. If you look at the difference between the two, is that amylopectin is 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 branched as compared to amylose and the type of um, the linkage normally you find that the linkage is normally happening within one alpha to six um to six um, linkages so you need to expect such linkages in amylopectin so that's the the structure okay so amylopectin molecule may contain up to two million glucose units so it's just a lot of it that it is made up of and then the side chain branching are normally clustered together within the amylopectin molecule so this is just the same thing that i have already explained so you need to expect amylopectin to be branched and it being branched it's normally form some um, clusters Okay, let's quickly look at glycogen. Let's quickly look at glycogen. So if you look at my animation there, there is, um, there is a glycogen molecule and also an enzyme. And mostly this glycogen molecule, it is uh, in form of a tree-like structure because it is branched. It is also branched and glycogen is normally found in animals so when when an enzyme acts on glycogen you find that glycogen is broken down into its small units which are just what glucose so those are just some of the things you need to understand so glucose is stored as glycogen in animal tissue by the process of wool glycogenesis so take note of that process so glucose is stored as glycogen in animal tissues by the process of glycogenesis then when glucose cannot be stored as glycogen or used immediately for energy it is converted to a tea to fat so when we go in detail that will be in biochemistry we we'll look at how glycogen can be converted to what to fats so when you have a lot or when the glycogen is in excess in your body it is converted to fats glycogen is a polymer of alpha d glucose and it is identical to amylopectin but the branches in glycogen tend to be shorter as compared to the ones which are what which are in amylopectin so this is just the difference between glycogen and amylopectin but remember both of them are branched then i think this has already been explained but mostly when you talk of glycogen this glycogen can also be compared to a a protein which is glycogenin so glycogenin is just a, a primer which helps in this molecule then glycogen is easily converted back to glucose by that conversion we need to expect some energy to be provided so the breakdown of glycogen leads to the formation of energy and also glucose that will be explained in um glycolysis so there is a tutorial video on my youtube channel about glycolysis it's also an important topic you need to 
understand so i'll share the link to that i won't teach that because i've already taught it and it's on the channel you need to make sure that you you go through that topic it's also important for you okay that's for that's it for glycogen which is the animal starch and it is branched as well and it contains how fatty glucose so cellulose basically cellulose is a it is a structural supporter of plants so it normally gives structural support to plants so when you talk about a carbohydrate that gives structural support a very good example you can give is cellulose so cellulose is a polymer of beta d glucose so um glycogen starch they have alpha d glucose but when you talk of cellulose cellulose has beta d glucose and one thing is that cellulose unlike starch it is oriented with the ch2 oh group which normally alternate above and below the plane of cellular molecule this makes it to be unblanched so cellulose is not blanched cellulose is what is unblanched then the absence of side chain allows cellulose structure to lie close together and form rigid structure so i think this has already been explained this point where i said mostly cellulose it acts as a structural supporter in plants and this guy um and this guy cellulose cannot be easily digested by the enzymes that are found in the human being but there are some microorganisms if outside and even within the human being which are able to which are able to break down this cellulose okay so wood is largely cellulose and cotton is almost pure cellulose i think the cover page of our lecture class it is having cotton and even in part one of our lecture class i explained about i mentioned something about uses of carbohydrate and that cotton was one of the use so cotton is purely made up of cellulose that's why if you look at the texture of cotton how it looks it is a little bit different from how millimeal uh, how millimeal is how potatoes are you you can see the difference potato and millimeal they are almost the same because they have starch but when you talk of cotton and uh, potato there is a difference and you can even observe you you use cotton to put on your clothes to make clothes and those clothes you put them on so that can help you to understand and remember that cellulose is normally used for structural support I think this part has already been explained i've already explained that um normally cellulose can be can be broken down into its units which is glucose units by this organism um which are termites and ruminants okay and then cellulose can be modified in the laboratory by treating it with nitric acid to replace all the hydroxyl group with nitrate and this will normally produce a very important compound which is known as cellulose nitrate so when cellulose is treated with nitric acid it will produce a very important product which is cellulose nitrate and this cellulose nitrate is an explosive component of smokeless powder so smokeless powder just from the name you can tell that this powder uh, this powder doesn't produce that that smoke so that's one of the fact about cellulose 
and then partially nitrated cellulose so this is completely cellulose nitrates it's completely nitrated but partially nitrated cellulose are known as pyroxylene so this one is normally used in the manufacture of plastic nail polish these these two are the ones you are much familiar with nail polish and plastics you can research what collodion is and also what lac quas are so if you look at the nail polish which our beautiful sisters um soulmates mothers and yeah the 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 nail polish which they put on their nails it is just made up of cellulose which has been partially nitrated in the lab and when it is partially nitrated it will produce what we are calling the pyroxylin so pyroxylin is the one which is used to make that so that's a simple structure of uh, cellulose remember that cellulose is not blanched okay before i go to chitin do i have any question from you guys any question florence any question no questions thank you you're welcome loveness any question Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Okay, let's move on and look at chitin. So, if you look at chitin, chitin is also a carbohydrate, but this carbohydrate doesn't follow the general formula for the friends. There is a little bit of replacement. So, this is one of the one of the exam question where you are asked which of the following uh, carbohydrates doesn't have the formula whatever whatever um for the formula you can check up our lecture number one if um i'm aware that class was not posted so i'll have that class at one of the days and then i'll be able to reteach it so chitin is if you look at insects hmm, if you get a cockroach you look up there it's shiny right so if you look at a cockroach it's shiny you look at a scorpion it's shiny the reason why they have that it's because of the presence of what we are calling chitin so chitin is um it depends with how you you pronounce it others will call it cheating uh, me i call it chitin that's according to my grade one teacher uh, yeah so uh, chitin is an unblanched polymer of n acetyl d glucoamine chitin is an unbranched polymer of n acetyl d gluco gluco amine so it is found in fungi and it is the principal component of anthropods and lower animal exoskeleton insects and club and also shrimp cells they do have what we are calling the chitin so chitin is normally found in fungi yeah, fungi you can talk about mushroom uh, for you my friends who eat mushroom that's an example of a fungi and is the principal component of anthropods these are just insects and lower animal exoskeleton we are just talking about the legs so the legs of insect clubs shrimp shells they are made up of this guy chitin so it may be regarded as a derivative of cellulose remember there was a part where cellulose or remember there is a part where we talked about cellulose 
uh, flawless kindly unmute yourself so there is a part we talked about um, cellulose being nitrated or cellulose forming pyroxylene so if you look at chitin chitin is regarded as the as a derivative of cellulose okay this is whereby the glucose unity have been replaced by acetyl amino groups acetyl amino group so the glucose units in cellulose it is normally being uh, is normally being replaced by the acetyl amino groups so this is the basic formula of the acetyl amino groups that's why it doesn't follow that formula like other carbohydrates so this is the basic structure so if you look at the 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 glucose the glucose unity is having this branch here so this guy is the acetyl amino group so every every guy is having that and all these monomers here are normally known as n acetyl d glucose amine so this is what makes up chitin it is classified as a carbohydrate despite it having um the the acetyl amino group because we know that um the pure pure carbohydrates they don't have anything apart from cho but for chitin it doesn't follow that rule instead it has a nitrogen in it okay so these are just some of the pictures showing um showing the showing the the chitin so chitin when it is treated well it can produce chitosan so chitosan can be used to produce biomedical devices drug delivery it can also help as a catalyst it helps in the in the in the production of cosmetics water purification and also and microbials so um this is these are some of the uses of chitin and this chitin it is found in these things so you can look at that you can look at the fungus there you can look at this organism that organism and also that organism all of these are having chitin in them so i'll give an assignment for you guys to go and look at a uh, heteropolysaccharide so go and check out what heteropolysaccharides are and make sure that you you state their uses so in the meantime ladies and gentlemen this marks the end of our today's class but you are free to ask questions using my lines the ones which i have shown on the screen and you can also ask right now so you are free to ask questions right now before we call it a night